If I create a video because of your comment, I'll give you a shout out. So be sure to let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. So I have a component here and it's got a set of headers on it. These are the headers that typically come with this component. I don't uh, prefer to use these. Um, they're, they're best used for cases where you want to put this into a breadboard, which I was using, but now I want to put it on a robot and I want to take these headers off. So there are a couple different ways I could desolder this. All right, the first being using a solder sucker. Now this is like the Cadillac of solder suckers as far as the, uh, the pump action ones. Uh, it costs quite a bit of money. This one is actually the electrostatic, um, the low static version. You, you don't have to go that far. I just happened to get it um, at a discount. So that's why I have this one. Typically they come in a light blue and I think yellow color with the button, the button's yellow. Um, but these will, they have a lot more power than those, um, than the one-handed pump, which has like a little, uh, a thumb press that you can push down. You know, it's got a little slide down and then it's got a little button right here and it's made it usually typically of an aluminum body. Those ones, I had one at one point and it lasted me a few months before it ended up, it ended up breaking. This thing I've had for probably three, four years maybe. Um, and it's still going strong. I still... You know, I still use it every day. So, um, using a solder sucker, you would apply your iron and then just come in from the side and suck it up. Now, the problem here is that my solder sucker is not going to actually get all of the solder. So, a little bit of solder remains on the back of that and the pin actually can't come off. I'll try to show you with the magnifying glass here. All right, I'm not sure if that's very clear, but you can see the pin is in the back there. And actually, if I took a pair, of, if I took a pair of pliers and tried to actually squeeze or pull this forward, it won't pull forward. Now, I could put enough pressure on it to break it forward, but what happens typically with that is you'll end up actually pulling the trace off of here, and then you won't be able to solder new devices to it. So one way to fix this um, is to apply your iron and kind of go in the other direction. So you can push the pin in the other direction and then try sucking it up again. Now looking at that, it doesn't look like it did a very good job. It looks like it's still about in the same position. I'm still kind of stuck to this. Yeah, it doesn't want to come out. As a last ditch effort, if you can't get the pin out, then one of the easiest ways is probably to, you want to apply the solder back onto it. So this creates like a nice little um, heat transfer using the solder as a heat transfer device. And then I would take a pair of pliers and pull on the back and then just slide it through. Now this is actually going to end up ruining the header. So again, this is a last ditch effort. And then at this point you can easily Heat that up, suck it up, and now you've got a nice hole there. But we can't see all the way through because there's a piece of plastic on the other side. Another alternative to desoldering is to use a desoldering iron. Okay, so this is a, a soldering iron basically with a special tip that is this whole device which goes into a bulb. At this point you press down slowly so you can push the air out and then when you press it onto the soldering pad, you let go and it sucks it up. The nice thing about this is that there's a little hole in here and that fits right over the pin. So if I put that here, you can see that sucked up quite a bit of solder and it gets a nice seal on it. And this helps you eliminate that problem of it sticking to the side. So what I do with this is I apply the solder sucker, or the, I apply the desoldering iron. I suck up the solder by pushing the pin forward. Then I do it again, pulling it back. And this way it gets 
it's able to pull the solder from the front side when I'm pushing it forward, and then when I pull it back, it pulls the solder from the back side. So then I get solder from both sides of the pin, leaving us with a nice clean through hole. So I'm going to finish this out with this tool and just show you that while this will stick just a tiny bit to the edges of the through hole, uh, you can just break them off with a little with a pair of pliers. So for instance, this one is stuck, but you, just that little tiny click that you might have heard there broke it loose. That one's already loose. It wasn't even sticking to the thing. So I'll continue with the rest of these. At this point, I've desoldered all of these pads. So these this header should just come out by itself. Yep, you can see all those pins are already broken loose and the whole thing just comes out by itself. So that's a lot easier than trying to use a solder sucker going from the side. Plus, when you think about it, this solder sucker costs, well, if you get the one that's not the anti-static, um, it's like 25 or 30 bucks, I think. And I picked this one up probably 20 years ago, so I'm sure the price is a little bit different than then. Uh, however, you can pick this up on Amazon from a non-Radio Shack brand for 25 bucks. And I think sometimes it even comes with a solder sucker on the side. So if you're going to be doing a lot of desoldering, and especially with a sequence of pins that are all in a row like this, I would highly recommend getting the desoldering iron as opposed to using a solder sucker. The solder sucker is great for things like uh, single components. There's one last alternative, which if you're really into desoldering and you really want to make sure you get it right, um, you can get an actual electronic vacuum-based desoldering tool that when you press the trigger will actually create a suction that doesn't stop until you let go of the trigger. So it's basically like the desoldering iron, only instead of a manual bulb, you'll have an electronic vacuum. One last thing I want to cover as far as desoldering goes is that you can also use a desoldering... Uh, a solder wick here, like, like this. It's basically a wire mesh made out of copper. And it has, typically it has flux built into the, into the, uh, the wick itself. If you really want to increase the effectiveness of the solder wick, then I would suggest applying your own flux if you have it. So an example of what this might do is if, say you, you cleaned up a solder pad and, all right, so that's a good example. I got this solder pad here, which I just added solder to. And so you can see it's got a little bit of solder inside of the through hole. And sure, we could go ahead and do that with a solder sucker. However, just to show you an example, I take some flux that I just, I use the paste style flux just because it's less messy when uh, you make a spill. So I put that on my pad. I'm going to put some solder on my iron just for heat transfer. And then I'll take a clean spot on my wick, put it down on the pad, and then I'll apply a pretty good amount of pressure, but just hold it there and you can see that solder just sucked right up into that pad, or into the wick. So now you can see that pad is straight through and the pin will go, pin go straight through. So clean it up with solder wick. I personally, I, I use solder wick to clean up the pads once I'm done desoldering. I don't use it to desolder. Some people do. Um, I guess it just comes down to personal preference. So it's up to you. To round out our, uh, our video, you've got the solder sucker, desoldering iron, solder wick, and then you've got the $300 solder sucker, which is typically used by professionals but it really is the best solution for desoldering. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe.